behold, there is magic and energy all around us. There's energy in the trees and these red rocks behind me, especially these red rocks of Sedona, Arizona, hence the very famous energy vortexes of Sedona, Arizona. But there's also energy in this crystal, and energy is absorbed into wood, stone, concrete, and crystals, of course. But they also all have their own vibration of energy, especially crystals, which people say is woo-woo witchy stuff when people are into crystals and the healing powers that they have. But it is a fact. All the way back in history, they have been used by the ancient Egyptians for the magic that was held within these crystals and stones. But again, they also absorb energy. Like black obsidian, which is known to absorb negative energy and reflect evil and darkness. Once a crystal absorbs too much energy, it shatters. So if you ever had a crystal that shattered, that is why. You need to cleanse and clear the energies. And most people are not completely familiar with the proper way of smudging, as by the indigenous natives of North America. I'm going to take you on a short journey today into the realm of smudging and proper clearing of energy, how to actually clear your crystals, and also how to program them because they're computers that need to be told what to do. So join me on this journey of clearing negative energy and programming crystals. Well, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. My name is Joseph Tittle, aka Spirit Man JT, coming to you here from my home, Sedona, Arizona. I welcome you to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Be a part of our tribe. Hit subscribe. Click that like button to show the algorithms that this is the stuff you want to see on your feed. And down below, you will find all the links to all my social media platforms, including the Awaken Your Spirit community of supporters. I love each and every one of you for the love and support that you bring to me, for being a part of the tribe, hitting subscribe, and clicking that like button as well. Let us venture into the realm of smudging and programming crystals. If you want to clear energy and do it the way the indigenous natives have done it and have taught us to do it properly, you're going to need a few items. The first item that you're going to need is an abalone shell. An abalone shell is a representative of the elemental spirits of water. You're also going to need sage. What was most commonly used by the natives was a combination of white sage, cedar, and sweet grass. I prefer to use just sage and I prefer the sage clusters as you see here. They burn better. I don't like the wands that are all tied together. They take forever to get lit and then you can't get them out. California white sage is the best. I get my white sage from a company connected to the natives directly, which is called Metasca Trading Company. Sage is the honoring of the elemental spirits of earth. Then you're gonna need a feather because we also have to honor the elemental spirits of air. And in most traditions or true ceremony, we use a feather wand, but a plain feather works as well. This is what we use to get the smoke to go in the direction that we want it to go into. Another item that's really well at clearing negative energies, besides, of course, the heartbeat of the drum and the frame drum, but also the rattle. I love using my rattle and I always use it when I smudge. What I do when I smudge is I put my native turtle rattle right on the edge of my feather wand and I hold them together like so. When I demonstrate the right way of smudging, you'll hear and see that I use a combination of the two. It's not necessary that you have a rattle. I'm just showing you a way in which I learn to clear energies and a stronger way of clearing energies. A rattle is a good way of getting out negative energies. When we actually ignite the sage, we are representing the fourth element the elemental spirits of fire. So having the abalone shell, your feather wand, the sage or the cedar and sweet grass mix, along with your feather wand, is an honoring of the elements, earth, air, fire, water, and of course, the great spirit. Some folks prefer to smudge or use as a form of clearing negative energies, polo santo. This is a little piece of polo santo, which is actually comes from a tree in South America, mainly Peru. And it's the natives of, of South America that made this popular here in the United States. I don't know if it's a problem in Peru, but I know here in North America, there's been a real problem with over harvesting of sage. So please, when you're purchasing sage or any item, 
try to purchase it from the natives directly so that you know it's not being harvested where it shouldn't be harvested or over harvested. The only problem I have with Polo Santo is, is that it's hard to keep it lit. Very hard to keep it lit. It does come in a powdered form, which I like because you can sprinkle it on top of the sage. I love the smell of Polo Santo. And you could just use Polo Santo to clear negative energies. But I'm here to teach you the traditional way of what I learned from the whole term smudging. The one thing that I've noticed that people make the common mistake of doing is when they go and they smudge a house or smudge an object, they always forget the most important thing first, to smudge themselves. For ceremony, it's always important when we do ceremony to be completely cleansed, to take a cleansing bath, and to smudge ourselves so that we are sacred energy going into that energy. Then you cleanse the objects or the place that you are wishing to free of negative energies. When you decide to smudge the inside of a home, there's another common mistake that people forget to acknowledge. And that's forgetting to open up all the doors and all the windows of the house. All the closet doors, all the cabinets, every inch, because dark energies can hide in any crack and crevice. You also need to have your windows open, number one, to make sure that you don't smoke out the house too much. Unplug all your smoke detectors, but remember to plug them back in when you're done. Having your windows open allows the negative energies a place to escape when there are things that need to escape. So make sure that you get every crack and crevice of your home. But first, you must smudge yourself first in this particular process. Of course, first, we're going to light our sage, of course. Get it nice and flared up. And I like to get it burning really, really good before I stick it in the dish. We're outside, so it's a little easier to get it lit. And again, the abalone shell, we place that earth and fire into the water to represent that. And then we take our feather wand. I'm doing a combination of my feather wand and my rattle. And we always start at our feet first by lifting up your feet and smudging each foot. And then you do a diagonal Z back and forth up your body covering the whole entire torso. The energy comes in from our left, goes down our left arm to the heart center, from the heart center down the right arm and out the right fingertips. So you want the energy to be cleansed from the left in all the way out to the right. You wanna make sure that you get the top of your head and of course your shoulders in the back of you as well. One technique that I utilize is I put it behind me and I walk backwards to make sure I get it behind me. You want to make sure that you are cleansed from head to toe, front and back, starting at the feet and again working up to the top of your head. Then you can go about ceremony, clearing or cleansing crystals and so forth. Now, when it comes to cleansing a crystal, we would do the same thing. Light the sage and use our feather wand to smudge the smoke over the crystal. But then that's clearing the energies that are on there or the energies that your crystal has absorbed. We can also do the same thing with amulets or talisman. Amulets and talisman, one you carry in your pocket in a pouch. The other one is worn around your neck, like I have here. This is very sacred to me. This is a Hopi bear claw. It comes from Hopi land, 3rd Mesa, Arizona, with the symbol of friendship. And yes, this was definitely cleansed, purified, and programmed in ceremony. So what do I mean by programmed? Well... You got to tell the crystal what to do, right? People that deny the energy and the power of crystals so easily forget the fact that the watch that they're looking at to see the time or the clock on the wall is powered by a quartz crystal. Quartz crystals are known to carry powers and energies. Again, how do you think that they powered watches and clocks for so many generations? So to those truth deniers that deny the magic within the crystals, you're truly missing out on the power and forget every time you go to check the time on your watch. Crystals, just like many amulets or talisman, contain specific magical and medicinal properties. Magical properties like rose quartz that's meant to attract love or passion. That would be the magical attributes to the rose quartz crystal. But there's also a medicinal property as well. Some crystals are good for the liver. Some are good for the heart. Some are good for stress. So all crystals contain both those magical and medicinal properties. So first, you want to search to see what medicinal property 
or magical properties your crystal or talisman and amulet have. Once you search for the magical and medicinal properties, then you can decide what you want to program your crystal to do. Another big misconception around crystals is the fact of what they're utilized for, how to get them to work. And most people, when I had a shop many years ago, would come into the shop and buy a crystal, put it around their neck and expect it to work. When choosing a crystal, when is the right time or what is the right crystal for you? That's another thing and a common mistake that I saw all the time when I owned my new age shop way back in the day. People would come in and they would look at the chart that told what each of the crystals did. And they'd be like, oh, I need this one for that. Instead of doing it the way you should, which is browsing crystals, gems, and seeing which one jumps out at you, the one you're pulled to, that's the one that's calling you. And from my experience, when my customers would come in my shop and do that, and then look at the chart after we determined what crystal they wanted, it would match up totally with what they needed in their lives at that point in time. So don't be misconceived and look for a crystal for a specific item. Instead, let the crystal pick you. Let the crystal choose you. Then look at its meaning. And then we can go about programming and telling it what to do. Programming a crystal is pretty easy, pretty simple. It's a lot more simple than programming a computer system. But this is a computer system. It does have a memory. We haven't quite figured out how to put memory onto crystals, but they have been working on that for over a decade. Once you decide what you want to program the crystal for, a good time to program and do your crystals is on the night of the full moon, depending exactly on what you're utilizing the crystal for, though. Because if you're trying to attract something like love or good luck, then you're going to want to do that on a new moon, actually. When you're doing things for healing and health, yeah, the full moon would be the best time to do that. Also charging your crystals in the light of the full moon. So you focus after you cleanse your crystals on your intention of what you want to program the crystal for. And it's pretty simple. You hold the crystal, the talisman or the object in your hand like so. You focus on your intention, what you're asking the crystal amulet or talisman to do for you. You take a deep breath in, focus completely on that intention and then blow your breath into the object three times in all deep breath in hold the intention blow the intention of course with love and gratitude into the object and do that three times in all and your crystal amulet or talismans ready to do its magic you can stick it out in the full moonlight to charge it or the new moon depending personally i find sticking my crystals in a natural running stream of water seems to be the best for me but you do what you feel is right for you I hope that this has all inspired you and maybe taught you a thing or two along the line. Until the next time, Spirit Man JT, thanking you all with infinite love and gratitude for hitting that subscribe, being a part of the tribe. Thank you for clicking that like button and for the love and support that you bring to me. Remember, you can catch me every Tuesday for Tuesday's Tittle Tea Time predictions updates, new predictions each and every Tuesday. Until the next time, much love to you all. Celebrate life, celebrate you. Be kind to others as you wish others to be kind to you because we do all know mean people suck. Much love. Spearman JT signing off. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.